Hello there, YouTube. Leo Martins here, and today I will be talking with you about my Premier League 2016-2017 predictions. So, you know, I'm just basing these predictions off of transfers that happened so far, what I think of the squad, the players, the manager, you know, all the simple things like that. So I'm going to start off with the 20th and working our way up. 20th, I've got Burnley. Now, I've got Burnley 20th because they haven't made any big signings just yet. They do have a good striker in Andre Gray, but he's not good to where he'll get you more than 15 goals in the BPL, which is something you kind of need. And overall, they just have a weak squad. I mean, a couple of years ago when they had Danny Ings, um, before he went to Liverpool, he was a great striker for them. But, of course, you know, he wanted to go on to bigger things, ended up getting injured, but it happens to the best of us. At 19-5 Hull City. Because so far, um, this is a week before the Premier League is about to start on August 7th, pretty much after the FA Community Shield was played, in which Manchester United beat Leicester City 2-1. Um, Hull City do not yet have a full senior squad. Basically, they only have 13 senior players, and you need 18 to be able to um, you know, go into a full game, the starting 11 plus the 7 on the bench. They also do not have a manager at the moment, so... Seeing these circumstances, I just don't think they're going to do well in the Premier League this season. And um, I did hear there's a group from China trying to buy them and, uh, you know, maybe give them a little bit of money to help get their squad together. But we'll see. At 18th, I have Watford. Uh, again, like um, just like Burnley, they haven't made any big signings just yet. And I also don't think Igolo and Dini, to their good strikers that performed well last season. I don't think they'll do the same this season. They, I don't know. It, it just doesn't seem like it's going to be their season. Um, they also, uh, they did re-sign Alan Neom, their right back, to, I think, a three-year deal. He's a good right back, so good for them. They kept him. And I think that's all I really have to say about Watford. They just don't have a strong enough squad to stay in the BPL anymore. 17-5 Bournemouth. Now, they signed Jordan Ibe from Liverpool. That's pretty big for them because he's an upcoming young talent. But he's going to have to compete with Max Gradle on the left wing, who's already a decent left winger. Uh, for striker, they have Callum Wilson. He's he's not bad. Could be could be better, but I don't know. I think he'll get him probably 12 goals this season. And I think just overall, their squad in general just isn't strong enough, especially their midfield. It just doesn't... And their midfield just isn't good, simply. And you need a good midfield. Now with 16-5, Crystal Palace. They did make two big-name signings. Steve Mandanda from Marseille. He was big for uh, Marseille last season in the League One. A lot of clean sheets. Just good goalkeeper in general. Uh, they signed Anders Townsend from Tottenham, if I'm correct. I remember last he played for Tottenham. I don't know if he had any other team before. But... Either way, they signed Townsend, good pacey winger. They have Belasi on the other side, so uh, you know they they have good wingers for now. But the rest of their squad in general just isn't strong enough. Just like the bottom, just like uh, the rest of these that I was talking about. Connor Wickham, all right striker, but he's just not BPL quality. Their other, just their other positions in general are just not good. You know, that's all I can say. Now, next, I have Sunderland at 15th. They haven't made any big transfers yet. They did sign David Moyes. Uh, well, not sign. They appointed David Moyes as their manager. Um, he's looking to get Fellaini, Yanezai, and Will Keane for Manchester United, the team uh, he managed a couple years ago and did ever so miserably with. Um, I know when he was at Everton, he did pretty well, but... The move to Manchester United just wasn't good for him. Kind of ruined his reputation a little bit. And someone else from Sunderland is Jermaine Defoe, a proven striker. We know he can get a lot of goals. We know he can score a lot, but it just hasn't been. A, it just wasn't a season last season. But I think he's he's gonna pull off a little something special this season. Maybe 17 goals. I don't know yet. We'll have to find out. Then next I have Swansea. Um, they made a big name, uh, two big name signings in the Leroy Fur from QPR for five million. 
He's a good, strong, all-around midfielder, which is something they needed. They also signed Fernando Llorente um, from Sevilla, I believe. He was a 2010 World Cup winner of Spain. Um, I think they signed him to replace, um, I think it's Jordan Ayu. There's two Ayus in the Premier League, uh, Andre and Jordan. But either way, they lost to Ayu. Um, they might be losing Ayu to West Ham for $25 million. Uh, I heard in the news this morning that the deal is basically com- complete since West Ham's accepted it. All they have to do is agree on personal terms, go through the medical, and it's a done deal. Um, I think, really, that's all I have to say about Swansea. They have Gomis already as a striker up there, but, again, it's the reason they signed Llorente. You know, they don't have a good enough striker up there. Uh, otherwise, their squad is okay, but it's not top 10 quality. Next, I have Stoke City. They recently signed Joe Allen from Liverpool for about $13 million, I believe. That's a very good signing for them. They needed somebody else in the midfield. They only had like Glenn Whelan, Stephen Ireland, uh, people of the sort. They do have a good winger, Narnadovic, and I just read a few minutes ago that he is um, basically committed to Stoke. He wants to stay, but, you know, footballers will, will say anything, you know. But I do think Stoke in general, uh, they do have a good squad, but uh, just, again, not top 10 quality, just like Swansea. Mm -mm. Now next, I have West Brom. Um, One of their main strikers, an upcoming one, uh, Berahino, Saito Berahino, he said he wants to leave. Again, something else I read recently, in the next 24 hours, there should be a deal complete about his future. Depending on uh, you know where he's gonna go, or if he's just gonna be released, and if somebody's gonna pick him up as a free agent, all we know all, all we know is that he doesn't want to stay at West Brom. That's it. Another good striker they do still have is Salomon Rondon. He's done per- he's done all right, you know, just about average in the BPL these last couple seasons. But uh, you know, I think they need a different striker. If they could somehow make Berahino happy and stay at West Brom, that's something they should definitely do because he's got a lot of talent for a young player. Now, the next team I have a lot to talk about, Southampton. Well, they have made a couple of big signings. Um, well, not really a couple of big signings. It's more like they lost a few a few players. But one of the big names is Pierre-Emile Hoiberg from Bayern Munich. He's a good young center midfielder who... I definitely think is going to be um, world-class material in the next five years. Southampton's always known for developing the young players, which is something I'm going to be talking about next. Um, but yeah, I think Hoiberg's going to do all right in the BPL. If he plays, hopefully he gets some first-team action because they've got Steven Davis there uh, basically playing the position he's going to play. So now some of the names they lost. They lost Graziano Pelle to the Chinese League. He was their main goal scorer. Um, I forgot how much it was for, but I just know the guys are earning a lot of big, big money over there. They also lost Sadio Mane to Liverpool for thirty-five million. Uh, that's one of the talents I was talking about, the young ones. I was actually watching the Liverpool and Barcelona game the other day. He scored a goal, pretty good one too. So you know, I, you know, I, I like the talent in the kid. He's gonna, he's gonna be big, and it's also gonna be a big loss for Southampton. Um, they also uh, they also lost Victor Wanyama to Tottenham. Uh, he's a good uh, he's he was a good holding CDM for them center defensive mid, but you know that it's gonna give him a, it's gonna give him a big loss. But we'll see if Hoiberg can fill up that space. Um, manager wise, they lost Ronald Koeman to Everton, and well, I'll be talking more about Everton when they come up in my predictions. I'm not gonna spoil it just yet. But Ronald Koeman was a good manager for them. He did pretty well. Um, again, just known for developing the young players and then just selling them off. Southampton is pretty much the Benfica of the Premier League. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think Southampton is going to end up finishing in 11th. And now we move on to the top 10. Number 10, I've got Everton, who I was just talking about. Uh, like I was saying, they got Ronald Koeman from Southampton, the manager. Um, this is because they lost Roberto Martinez, which was their past manager, to Belgium. 
which is definitely one of the weirder manager signings I've ever seen or heard of, you know, anywhere. I mean, Roberto Martinez signing and taking up the Belgium job. I just don't, I just never saw that coming. But uh, back to the squad of, um, back to Everton squad. They have Lukaku, a very good striker. Um, he's already proven that so many times. Chelsea wants to buy him back. He used to play there, but they want to buy him back for $65 million plus Louis Grammy. If I was Everton, I would stay with Lukaku and maybe hope for a better offer. If there's not a better offer than that, then just keep him. You know, he'll score some golosos for you. They've also got Ross Barkley, a good upcoming midfielder for England. He's already pretty good, but I there's a lot he could improve on, really. They also have John Stones, who will very likely be going to City for uh, Manchester City for $50 million. It's a lot of money for him, but I think it'll pay off in the end. They also lost Tim Howard to the um, uh, Colorado Rapids, free transfer, but hey, you know, I think it's a good move for Tim Howard to go back to his home country. Next team, at ninth, I have Middlesbrough, recently promoted. Now, this may come as a bit of a surprise, but I think Middlesbrough is going to do pretty well with all the signings they've made. Victor Valdez, Alvaro Negredo, Antonio Barragan, Brad Guzan, two goalkeepers, but you know, whatever. The one thing they still do need to improve on is the center defense. The center defense is just weak for them, and I think if they improve on that, they may even end up finishing in the top eight. But so far, as I'm recording this, they haven't made any big center defensive signings. But yeah, I do think Middle of the Bros is going to do all right. Uh, well, especially, like I said, with Alvaro and the greatest striker. He's probably going to get 19 goals this season because he used to play for Manchester City, actually. He got 24 goals in 48 games for them, which isn't that bad. Could be better, but all right, I'll, we'll just see how he does. At 8th, I have Tottenham Hotspur. Now, I have them at 8th, even though they finished in the top 5 last season. Um, the reason I have them at 8th is because they, they've only made two signings in Vincent Janssen from Alkmaar, good upcoming striker, and uh, Victor Waniyama from uh, Southampton. But I don't think like it's good enough for them. They need a big name. Of course, they already have a big name striker in Harry Kane, but... I just don't see him, I honestly just don't see him doing as well as he's done these past couple seasons. He'll maybe only get like 15 goals this season. And maybe Vincent Yasin, maybe he will step up, but I doubt it. I doubt it. And now at 7th, I have West Ham United. I have West Ham there because they've made a couple of big name signings in uh, Faguli and uh, Nordvite. A uh, good center, good young center defender. Faguli, he's used to play for Valencia back in uh, last season. He signed for West Ham on a free transfer, which is very good for them. He's already scored a goal for them in um, Champions League Europa League qualifier football, which and it was a very good goal in, as well. Of course, they also do still have Dimitri Payet. Uh, of course, you know he's proven that he's a world class player. Not only just in the BPL, but also in the Euros, you know, for France. So remember, the role that he scored on the first day of the Euros to win the game for France. It was insane. But, you know, in the end, um, I I think he's going to perform even better this season. And But now on to another player, someone they lost, uh, James Tompkins, the center back. He was good for them, but I don't really think it'll take a big toll on them, you know. They just... They signed another center back to replace him, so what's the big deal? All right. Now with sixth, I have Liverpool. Now, usually they barely finish in this range now nowadays, but they have made some big signings in Sadio Mane, Joel Matip, a good center back, which is something they needed. Boris Kerris, a goalkeeper, you know, because McNeilay, he's, he's just shit. McNeilay's just shit. What else do I need to say? Uh, they also signed Klavan from Augsburg, another good center back. So um, I think, and they also got rid of Skirtle and uh, Kolo Torre, two center backs who never really performed that well for them. I think Skirtle went to Fenerbahce and Torre to Celtic in the Scottish League. They also lost uh, Jordan Ibe to Bournemouth, as I mentioned earlier. They should have really uh, kept him 
I think he could have been good for them. Oh, reminds me, they also signed Wijnaldum from uh, Newcastle. Wijnaldum, although yes, he played for Newcastle, Newcastle got relegated because they are a shit team. Um, Wijnaldum was probably their best player all season, in my opinion. There's a reason he signed for Liverpool. You know, he wanted to play BPL football. And he deserves it. I think there was another player at Newcastle that said he wants to play um, BPL football. Oh, yeah, it was a Sissoko. Real Madrid was looking at him, but, you know, that's not important. Newcastle's not in the BPL, and I'm not making the league of predictions right now. All right. Next team at 5-5, Leicester City. Past Premier League champions. Now I think they're only going to get 5th, maybe even lower, considering they're playing in the Champions League. So I don't know how their squad is going to withstand all that fitness, all the fitness issues and everything, and in case of an injury, you know, what's going to happen. They lost N'Golo Conte, who was a big, you know, just a big midfielder for them in general. He, he was basically, for me, the second best midfielder in the BPL all season. The best one was Dimitri Payet. Um, I think they made I think they made a mistake in getting rid of him, but you know what can you do with such a big team like Chelsea buying him up? They did buy um, Zeller from Hanover ninety six, if I'm correct. He's not right goalkeeper, basically just a backup for Casper Schmeichel in case of injury. Casper Schmeichel also signed a new five year contract with Leicester City, so good for him. Uh, Leicester signed Kapuska, a good young uh, left winger from Poland. He performed pretty well at the Euros, in my opinion. They also signed Ahmed Musa, uh, scored an amazing goal against Barcelona in the preseason. Yes, it's preseason, but it was still a great goal. Great run from him. Pacey striker, just like Vardy. So if they pair up up top, uh, boy, good luck stopping that. They also signed uh, Mendy, Napoli's Mendy from Nice to try to replace Conte, but from what I've seen, he's nothing like Conte. He's not even close to his level. Kind of a bad signing for them, but they can't really get rid of him just now. All right, next team at fourth, I have Arsenal. I have Arsenal at fourth because they still have not signed the world-class striker. Giroud is not a man you want to have a striker. He'll score goals occasionally, but he's not world class like he did basically almost nothing like at the euros i it's just insane like why does wenger keep a hold of him and on speaking on the topic of wenger why do arsenal still keep him you know this is just i don't know why he's been with them for so long and they still haven't gotten rid of him they haven't won much under him lately at all it's crazy and um, they did sign they have made two other name signings, you know, but they need a striker. I mean, come on, let's just face it. They've signed uh, Granite Chaka from Munchen Gladbach. I think he's, that's a good signing for them, but I mean, like they need any more midfielders of Ozil, Cazorla, Ramsey, Coughlin, uh, Wilshire. They have so many already. Why do they need more? They also signed Rob Holding, a center back from Bolton. What I've seen so far, he's all right. Um, I think that's a good signing for them since uh, I just saw that Gabriel Paulista got injured. Uh, I think he got carted off. I'm not exactly sure, but all I know is he's going to be out for a little while and Rob Holding's going to have to replace him. Now at third, I have Chelsea. Now, last season, Chelsea did not perform at all well, mainly because Hazard couldn't score. Diego Costa was just having an offseason. Willian was easily their best player. And then just, I don't know, just the team didn't perform under Mourinho, which was weird. I feel like they kind of boycotted him, in a sense. But, either way, they signed uh, two new players, N'Golo Conte, for $35 million, I think it is. Um, from Leicester City, good signing for them, bad for Leicester. Um, they also signed uh, Bachuai from Marseille, I believe. I've seen I've seen him play a, little, a couple times. He's pretty good, but I don't think he's gonna replace Diego Costa just yet, unless he leaves. Which I think I think Diego Costa might end up leaving. I don't know where, but we'll have we'll just have to find out because Chelsea's also looking at Lukaku. But you know we'll see. Something else I want to talk about with Chelsea is uh, Eden Hazard. Last season he didn't do anything until towards the end. You know. 
he had what I think it was three goals, four goals maybe in the whole season. It's crazy. Of course, one of those last goals was insanely good, but he just needs to be consistent, you know, like he was a couple seasons ago. If he just if he's consistent like he was a couple seasons ago, he could still um you know, he could lead Chelsea maybe maybe to the title. Who knows? But I don't know. I, I think he'll he'll definitely do better than he did last season, but not not you know exactly like the quality like he was two years ago. And now at second I have Manchester City. I have Manchester City at second simply because well the team of first, you know, you you guys already know who it is, but either way, Manchester City's made a lot of good signings with Gundogan from Dortmund, amazing signing by Guardiola. A uh, great manager appointment also. Leroy Sané from Schalke. A uh, good, uh, good right winger. Maybe replace comp- maybe some competition for Sterling, but they also signed Nolito for that reason. Uh, again, yeah, Nolito's a great player. They signed Aaron Moy from Melbourne, if I'm correct, in the Australian League. But either way, I have seen a couple of highlights from the guy. He's all right, but he's not going to get a starting position in Guardiola. Uh, Also, they need to make sure KDB stays fit and healthy because he was their key to the title pretty much last season. If, and you saw as soon as he got injured, you know, Manchester City just wasn't the same team. KDB is crucially, is just crucial to them. You know, you, you kind of need him if he's on your team. Uh, I think that's really all to say about Man City. You know, Aguero is just going to score a lot like he always does. Um, David Silva, I think he'll do all right. Company's going to get injured like he always does. Mangal is going to fuck up a defense like he always does. But, <laughs> you know, whatever. Uh, Man City is looking at John Stones for that exact reason because, you know, just a, a replacement in case Company does get injured again. And yeah, I think that's all I have to say for Man City. And then my BPL title winners, Manchester United. Now they've made a lot of big transfers under Jose Mourinho which, of course, was their first big one of the summer. Mourinho, great signing, uh, great manager pickup for them, of course. He's proven to be a great manager. Just that last season at Chelsea, he just didn't do that well for some reason. Kind of weirded me out. But some of the big-name transfers. Eric Bailly from Villarreal. Amazing center back. I just think he has some problems with one-on-one uh, on-the-ground defending. He has a little bit of trouble defending against good dribblers. Uh, they also signed Mkhitaryan from Dortmund, very creative winger who can score goals for you as well. He's just basically a good all-around winger, and I think it was bad for Dortmund to lose him, but what are you going to do? It's Manchester United. Another big name that they signed, of course, just the biggest one so far, is Ibrahimovic. I mean, <laughs> especially since they got him for free. Of course, it's only a one-year deal, but I mean, it's Zlatan Ibrahimovic. In his first two in his first two games for United, he's got two goals, one in a friendly and this one and one against Leicester City to win the FA Community Shield. Um, and also the uh, today this morning I read I woke up and I read that Pogba was going to Manchester or to London to complete his medical, and then he's going he's going to go to Manchester to sign for the team. Pretty much Juventus allowed him to have a medical, and Manchester United confirmed it on their website. So if Pogba signs, it's basically a guaranteed title win for Manchester United now. Let me show you guys exactly. Manchester United. Should have already had it pulled up. So there it is on BBC News. France midfielder set for Man U Medical. I think that's the official Man United website. Yeah, this is it. Pogba to have a medical. Hashtag Pogba. Pogba to have a medical at the AON training complex. So, you know, all he has to do is pass the medical. Hopefully it doesn't turn out like Lucas Silva, who failed his medical from Madrid to Sporting. But, you know, all he has to do is pass the medical and that's it. You know, uh, Man, U- Man United's going to win the BPL. Oh, also, uh, Rashford. Uh, I do have to mention him. Uh, he's not going to play that much because, you know, Ibra. Ibra's there, you know, it's just Ibra. Good luck getting a starting spot over him. Unless they play a 4-4-2 with two strikers up top, you know, then that's just a different case. Um, 
But yeah, I think those are my BPL predictions so far on August 7th, 2016. Now, this is before any other big name transfers were made. So, yeah, if there's any big names signed after this, like probably in the transfer deadline day, yeah, I know there's going to be a lot. Well, I'm just going to have to miss it. I'm just going to miss it. And maybe it will change up my predictions. Maybe I'll make an update video. We'll see. So, that's been it for today from uh, your boy here, Leo Mortens. And I will see you guys at another time. Goodbye.